In today's video, I've got a new Traeger pellet grill and I'm gonna do the burn off the correct way. Hey, this is Ricer from Dead Broke Barbecue Nation and welcome back to the channel. But if you're new here, we try to help you enhance and amplify your backyard barbecue fun. And if you haven't already, check out the Dead Broke Barbecue Nation. Now there's a lot of people out there that are doing videos on pellet grills because they bought one, they follow the manual, and then they decide to press record. That's the easy part. Everybody looks at the manual. I have to admit, I'm also pretty new to the whole pellet grill cooking. My first pit was in 1980. My dad gave me a tripod and told me to dig a fire pit. He said he was sick of feeding me. I had to do it myself. So grab a bag of pellets, AJ. We're gonna amplify some backyard barbecue fun. The Traeger model that I'm doing this burn off on today is the Pro 780. It's got a PID controller along with some Wi-Fi technology. Now my boys, honestly, they did the unboxing and the assembly. I will say that I was pretty impressed how simple this pit was to put together. This model is lacking a side shelf and a front table, so there's less to put together. But it was so simple, my boys didn't have any issues at all. And one thing that I thought was super cool, they don't use any styrofoam in that packaging. It's all just rolled up cardboard, and if you're very careful and you got little kids, you can make a fort out of it. But of course, with my luck, I had to spin that whole box 180 degrees so we could see the front end. And the other thing that I really like about this model is that they put magnets on and they don't have any sticky adhesive, so you have to sit there and mess with pulling off those stickers. I mean, look just got magnets. So if you really want to, you can just put it back on. Show off to all your neighbors. I got a 780. Obviously, pellet grills need electricity to operate. So go ahead and plug it in. For today's burn off, I'm using some Lumberjack Competition Blend pellets. Open up the hopper and you're gonna wanna check inside to make sure that there's no foreign debris or anything laying inside on the bottom along that auger shaft. Before I dump in this bundle of joy, I'm gonna make sure that I see a couple revolutions on that auger. First, we just turn the power on, push your knob and hold it. About three seconds. We hit the menu, scroll down to the auger, press the button in, and then we're gonna go right to prime the auger and hold the button in. And we can see that that auger is turning. And open up the lid, but I don't have any of my shelves or my deflector in yet because I want to make sure that those pellets are starting to land in the pot. We'll start dumping a few in here. It takes about four minutes and then you'll start seeing them plinking and plunking in that fire pot. Now I do my burn offs a little different and I'm going to turn this up to 250 degrees. Because I'm a firm believer that these things are mass produced and they don't get a lot of time for that paint to cure. So I start out low because I have seen some horror stories before where guys pits start to peel because they hit that high temperature too early. Take an extra hour and do it right. My dad owned a body shop for 25 years. Wow. I learned how to cure paint. Now it's set at that temperature that I want. Just press the button and now we're gonna hold the ignite button down. Now you're gonna hear a few more pellets start to fall in the pot and they tell you to close the lid, but I'm completely against that. You wanna make sure that this thing starts to burn clean. So leave the lid open until you start to hear that afterburner kick in. White dirty smoke can actually build up some extra gases and if you look on the internet, you're gonna find where people have actually blown their lids off. Now you're gonna see a little bit of smoke start to develop and then just give it a few seconds and you're gonna start to see that fire. Now when you start hearing that fan actually start to blow the whole time, that's when it's really starting to give it that air so we can start to get some ignition. And you can see, we got fire. Now obviously, it's time to button this thing up. Take your deflector and we'll put that right over your fire pot, but be careful, because there is some flame in there. Grab your drip pan and there's a couple little grooves that it fits in there perfectly. Now you've got this little lip. It's gonna go on your right hand side or towards the fire pot. Get her in. And that's gonna hook on 
and you'll feel it slide right into place. I can hear the afterburner kicking in, but first I wanna go ahead and just give it a little bit of canola oil because I wanna season up this pit. Remember, we're burning all the oil and the impurities out of this pit so you can start cooking on it. We're just gonna cover up this grease pan some, a little bit in the back, some on the sides, and a little bit right around that stack. Now, let's go ahead and put in our grates. Get this bottom one in and then our little warming rack next. Now it's time to close up our lid and once it reaches 250 degrees, set a timer for 20 minutes and then we'll check back in. My 20 minute timer went off, I'm gonna turn it up to 350 degrees. So you just start turning it up to that 350 mark. Press in the dial. First time I pressed it, I ended up bumping it up to 255 degrees, but that's not a big deal. Just turn it down, press the button again. Once it preheats at 350, then I'll set a timer for 20 minutes again. My 20 minute timer went off, but before we go ahead and turn the Traeger up to 450 degrees, I wanna thank all of my Patreons and all of you that have joined the Dead Broke Barbecue Nation on YouTube. Plus, if you haven't already, make sure you join the Dead Broke Barbecue Nation over on Facebook. Over there, we're just having fun showing the things that we cook and on the equipment that we use. So let's go ahead and crank this up to 450 degrees. Just like last time, we just start turning it up. Crankity, crankity, crankity. 450, and again, press it straight in. This time, I'm gonna set a timer for 30 minutes once it's preheated up to that 450 degrees. We wanna make sure that we're really baking this pit in and burning out all of that machining oil and the debris from the manufacturing process. Some of you might have some of these fancy ambient temperature probes that you can go ahead and put in that pit and start registering to see what your thermal work signal says compared to what the actual controller says. Do not do this yet. With a PID controller, it actually is going to start learning how to run. It's got a little bit of intelligence and it will get better the more you start using it. I see a lot of people make that mistake. Hey, look, it's 20 degrees off on the first time when they did the burn off. Honestly, that's a rookie move and you don't want to do it. Cook on it a couple times. You can do a, like a biscuit test to see if you have any hot spots. All the pellet grills that I run have a little hotter side compared to the other. And the temperature probe is on the side and it's actually reading the whole chamber temperature. And after you've cooked on it a few times, go ahead and check some of the temperatures throughout that pit. But right out of the gate, it's gonna change after you use it some. I'll bring you back in 30 minutes and I'll do a quick little review and walk around on the 780. Our 30 minute timer went off, let's go ahead and shut the Traeger down. And all you do for that is just hold in the button. And it's gonna go into a shutdown cycle and basically all it's doing is burning off the remaining pellets that are in that fire pot. Now I wanna check and see how my seasoning went. I definitely have a good patina on that grease pan for sure, and that will definitely help us clean this drip pan up. Traeger makes these nice little disposable drip pan covers but you don't have to use them. You can just go ahead and put a little bit of elbow grease in there and scrape off the debris when you're done cooking. My first impression, I really like how this controller operates and some of the features that are on it. I actually love the fact that you can back up that auger. None of the pellet grills that I've had so far have that option. Now it's supposed to actually help you with an auger jam. Who knows? It might help. I actually like how you prime up this pellet grill and you get them to a certain point and then you just press the ignite button when you're ready to start cooking. You're gonna use that obviously if you go ahead and change a flavor in your pellet. And you just have to loosen up this nut, put a pail underneath it and catch all those pellets if you wanna change them out. And it's actually held up by a magnet. Now obviously I haven't cooked on it yet so that's gonna be kind of the first test to the 780. We'll see how it performs. But the assembly and the burn off it went really smooth. I hope you enjoyed this video and it's a great time to give me a thumbs up. And if you give me a thumbs down, well, obviously you're a rookie influencer. Or you might not be such a rookie, but you've been using those ambient temp probes to check the difference between the chamber and what the controller says. Well, that's all I got. Roll the nation.
Oh yeah, I've seen a ton of people put their ambient temp probe in there and say, oh, it's off, what am I gonna do? Let it run. Yeah, so just, if you get a new pit, don't do that. Cook on it a little bit, then go ahead, and check it out. Then you can see, but obviously on this one, left side, there's more darker patina on that drip pan, so. Hot zone. 